guys, you are welcome to DSSG Nation. So if this is your first time watching a video from DSSG Nation, do make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell button so we can notify you whenever we create any video. So today we are going to be talking about hypothyroidism. So pick your paper and your pen and let's get started. Hi guys. Yeah, welcome back. So we said we are going to be talking about hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism. Now, the word hypo means low production. Low production. But on a neutral ground, the word hypo means below. So, and the word thyroid here is the nose in the thyroid hormones thyroid hormones so when you say hypothyroidism it means low production or secretion of thyroid hormones so in hypothyroidism what used to happen but before we go into that let's talk about the anatomy of the thyroid gland so let's just look at the follicular cells what they look like so within the thyroid gland Let's say this is a structure now. Let's say this is a lobe. So within the lobe, we have different follicular cells. So within the thyroid gland, we have follicular cells. And these follicular cells, they secrete thyroid globulin into this space. So this space is called the alveolus. So if you haven't watched our video on thyroid gland, you can just go back there. Now, these are the follicular cells, thyroid follicles. So the follicular cells, also called the thyroid follicles. So the secret thyroid globulin, thyroid globulin. This thyroid globulin, thyroid globulin, inside the alveolus. So the space is alveolus. Pleura is alveoli, alveolus. Now, we also have different follicles like that. In what? In our thyroid gland so containing um, made up of alveoli that contains thyroid globulin so same thing right here follicular cells that are secreting thyroid globulin into the alveolus so between all these you have parafollicular cells and blood vessels so blood is running here now blood is running we know this place blood so blood that is rich in iodine to be precise blood rich in iodine so it's inside this place now so now, having established this knowledge, let's talk about the physiology of um, thyroid hormone production. So that is the production of the T3 and the T4 statement. Yeah, welcome back. Now we say we are going to talk about the production of the thyroid hormones. Now, our hypothalamus hypothalamus is going to release thyroid releasing hormone thyroid releasing hormone and the thyroid releasing hormone is going to act on the what on the anterior pituitary the anterior pituitary gland and the anterior pituitary gland is going to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone TSH thyroid stimulating Hormone. So the thyroid stimulating hormone is not going to do what? It's going to act on the follicular cells. So we said these are the follicles. So the thyroid follicles, the follicular cells. So these are the anopoly and this is the alveoli, alveolus rather. Now on each thyroid follicles we have receptors called the T S H R, which means thyroid stimulating hormone receptor. So the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor is this one now. So the, the, the thyroid stimulating hormone is going to bind with it. And when it binds with it, two things are going to happen. The first one, these follicular cells, they are going to start producing thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin. So they will start to produce what? Thyroglobulin within the alveolus. And the next thing that will happen, the second thing is that there will be opening of the iodine channel. The opening of what? Of the iodine channel. So there will be an opening for iodine. And we said we have blood stream within the follicles. So the blood, iodine that is in the blood, 
they are going to pass in, they are going to move into this channel, and they are going to combine with what? They are going to combine with thyroglobulin. And when iodine combines with thyroglobulin, it's going to give us the T3 and the T4, which are what? The T3 is triiodothyronine. And the T4 is tetraiodothyronine, also called the thyroxine. So that is how the T3 and T4 are produced. Now, the quick recap. Hypothalamus is going to release thyroid releasing hormone, which will act on the anterior pituitary. So in turn, the anterior pituitary is going to secrete the thyroid stimulating hormone. And the thyroid stimulating hormone will bind with the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor on the follicular cells. And the first thing that will happen is that there will be production of what? Production of thyroid globulin by the follicular cell. And the second thing is that there will be opening of channel for the movement of iodine from the blood into what? Into the alveolus and T3 and T4 are going to be formed due to the combination of what? Due to the combination of iodine and thyroid globulin. So, in hypothyroidism, there is reduced production of these hormones. So, the major cause is reduction in iodine intake. Reduction in what? In iodine intake. So, let's come with the cause and the pathophysiology. Stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. Now, in hypothyroidism, so there is reduction in iodine intake. And once there is what reduction in iodine intake, what is going to happen? Reduction in iodine intake, it means the other thing that, is, that will bind with thyroid globulin is not around. So, in hypothyroidism now, we said within the thyroid, we have the follicular cells. Follicular cells. So, and the follicular cells in response to what? In response to thyroid stimulating hormone. When it's binding with it, it will lead to what? Production of thyroglobulin. 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 Now, the blood vessel within the thyroid gland, they don't possess iodine because the person is not taking an adequate iodine. So, there will be no iodine to pass through the what? The iodine channel. So, there is no what? There is no iodine to move in. And once iodine is not coming in, there will be no formation of T3 and T4. So there will be no formation of T3 and T4. Because there is no adequate or enough iodine to bind with this thyroid globulin. And now what is going to happen? That will lead to the pathophysiology. So let's start talking about the pathophysiology right from here. Now we said we have different words, different follicles, numerous follicles rather, in what? In the thyroid gland. And once this thyroid stimulating hormone is binding with these receptors, there will be continual formation of thyroid globulin. And when thyroid globulin started accumulating inside the what? Inside the follicles, the follicle become bigger. They start becoming bigger and bigger. And this will not be happening to what? To just one follicular cells, one of follicular cells. It will be happening to all the follicles within the thyroid gland. So accumulation of this thyroid globulin will lead to the enlargement of the thyroid gland and that will lead to what we call goiter, goiter, goiter. So the formation of what? Formation of thyroid globulin alone and, not, and, and there is no addition of iodine. So there will be no T3 and T4 and that will lead to the enlargement of what? Of the thyroid gland and when it becomes enlarged, it will bring about this cosmetic disfigurement which is goiter. So and after then what is going to happen? The next thing I'm going to talk about under the pathophysiology is the obstruction of the airways. Don't forget, the goiter is going to do what? It's going, I mean, the, the, the thyroid gland is going to become enlarged. So enlargement of this thyroid gland is going to obstruct the airways. It's going to do what? It's going to obstruct the airways to the lungs. Because from our location of the thyroid gland, we said the root of the neck. So it is going to do what? It, it, the, the obstruction, I mean, the enlargement is going to do to the obstruction of the airways. And there will be no adequate movement of oxygen in and adequate movement of CO2 out of the body. And what will this lead to? One, the person is going to have dyspnea. That is a sign and symptom. So, under the sign and symptom, rather. So, the person is going to have dyspnea that is difficulty in what? In breathing. Because the goiter is strangulating the airways. And after that, what is going to happen? The next thing that will happen is that due to the fact that enough oxygen is not coming in, and enough CO2 is not leaving the body, there will be trapping of CO2 within the blood. They will be able to move out of the body. So that will lead to um, um, acidosis. 
and the fact that um, oxygen cannot digest back into the blood, the person will also be cyanosis. So cyanosis will be one of these one, one, one of the clinical manifestations. And what is going to happen next? With the fact that the airway has been obstructed, the person will have a kind of um, shrill and harsh voice, harsh sound called stridor. Stridor. So stridor. So this this is kind of um, of um, breathing sound that the person will be presenting with, like a harsh sound because the air is not moving out adequately. And compression of the laryngeal nerves. Compression of what? The laryngeal nerves. Compression of the laryngeal nerves will lead to hoarseness. Hoarseness. So we lead to hoarseness of the voice. And after that, that is just talking about what the defect that it is going to cause to the airways. So is it the only airways that pass through the neck? No. We know that the esophagus also pass through the neck. So there will be compression of the esophagus. So there will be compression of the esophagus, and the person will have difficulty swallowing, which, which is known as dysphagia. This phagia. The this is difficulty. Phagia denotes the word swallowing, and that is where the esophagus got its name from. Esophagus. That fag that ends it, and that is what we used to refer to when we're talking about phagocytosis, cell swallowing. So that is not what I'm going to today. But in short, all this is going to happen in what? In hypothyroidism. So let me just come in once again and talk about the positive surgery from beginning to the end. I can call it a day for this video. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying tuned. So we said in hypothyroidism, um, there is reduction in the production of the of, of the thyroid hormones. So the major cause is reduction in what iodine intake, as iodine is one of the major constituents of um, thyroid hormones. So we said the thyroid stimulating hormone is going to bind with the TSHR, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor. We said this is going to lead to what accumulation of thyroid globulin in the alveoli of the thyroid gland so and iodine is supposed to what is supposed to combine with it so you know, there, there, there should be opening of the iodine channel so iodine can merge with it to form the t3 and t4 but in hypothyroidism there is no adequate iodine to bind with thyroid globulin to make it form what thyroxine and triiodine that is the t3 and the t4 so we said continual bombardment of these um among the tsh on the receptor will lead to increase in production of thyroglobulin and thyroglobulin will lead to what? accumulation of thyroglobulin rather will lead to accumulation of thyroglobulin within the thyroid gland and that will bring about what's going to enlargement of the thyroid gland and we said the thyroid gland, the location is the root of the neck which means it's going to be strangulating um, the organs in the neck and then it's going to be bringing about what? it's going to be increasing prayer on them so we talked about the airway that is going to lead to difficulty in what? in breathing, known as dyspnea so because it's strangulating the air with the trachea to be precise and then we said after that due to the impedance in oxygen and CO2 movement it's going to lead to cyanosis, a belief discoloration of the skin or the mucous membrane to be precise and after that we said compression of the laryngeal nerve will bring about hoarseness of the voice so we said after that compression of the esophagus as well will lead to dysphagia and when dysphagia sets in difficulty in swallowing the person will lack interest, will lose interest in eating and that can lead to um, anorexia. So anorexia is a term loss of appetite because there is difficulty in swallowing. That can also lead to um, weight loss and the likes. So that is the end of this video. So if you do enjoy this, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time watching a video from DSS Generation, do make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell button so we can notify you about it. Hi guys.